important to appreciate political communication in our political context. And one of the things I like to mention is what are the political leaders saying that they are not saying? They say things that they are really not saying. Do they say things that they mean? And what are they not saying that they are really, really saying? These are issues you must consider. So when somebody tells you, go and arrest and prosecute them, do they really mean an arrest and prosecution? And when they say, don't go, or they don't even say anything, what does it mean? We need to appreciate all that in context. So vigilante groups, we must understand, are the heart of control of political parties almost taking the place of foot soldiers. And when we know the history of these foot soldiers, we will understand. They either work for such parties to win elections, or their support is required for parties to win elections in future. And that is the reason why they say they are our own people. After everything, they will tell you they are our own people. Once they help a party to win an election, they constitute or consolidate themselves and have a support base within the winning party. Now, I'm developing this point gradually, and I could hear people say, why? Since the vigilante groups constitute a mobilizing force that might be needed for another election, and we are gearing up for another election, the party structure hardly condemns the activities and are careful in making pronouncements against them. And when you even arrest them, behind the scenes, they come and tell their own people and find a way of taking them. They act in full belief that they have the full support of their party. And it's also clear that some form of radicalization has taken place over the years that makes them act without any fear at all. If nothing is done to stop this menace, we'll be witnessing what I call rule of political parties instead of rule of law. And it is already happening. You cannot tie the hands of the Ghana Police Service with the kind of constitutional arrangement that we have and expect them to be professional. Our hands are tied. And yet you expect the police to be professional. How can that be? Now, the current constitutional arrangement of appointment and removal of police leadership does not easily embolden police chiefs to act impartially. No. It doesn't help them. And I'll go back to it right now. For the Ghana Police Service to be impartial and completely insulated from all kinds of interferences implies embarking on a robust constitutional reform. 